just give us a very brief overview of how the African Export Import Bank works. Well, uh, first of all, uh, people should remember that back in the uh, 80s, when the debt crisis uh, broke out, uh, international banks were leaving the continent. Uh, the situation was so uh, serious that many African countries have even difficulties to uh, supply, to import regular items such as rice or oil. So back in 1987, African ministers of finance meeting during uh, an African Development Bank annual meeting decided to uh, establish an African institution that will not only promote trade between African countries, but promote trade between Africa and the rest <coughs> of the world. Africa, as all everybody knows, is a continent that uh, trades the less with itself. And Africa is also the weakest trader uh, in the global trade. Mm. So African Export Import Bank was established as a unique partnership between African countries, we have about 34 African countries which are shareholders of the bank, African private investors, some 60 African private investors are shareholders of Afrexim Bank, and non-African private international shareholders such as uh, Standard Chartered Bank, Citibank, uh, Exim China, Exim India and the like, making Afrexim Bank a unique partnership promoting trade using a private uh, development approach. By private development approach, we mean that the bank is not only promoting trade, but also distributing uh, benefit and profit and dividends to its shareholders. All right. Now, Mr. Ekra, talk to us about the various lines of credit. You have an authorized $750 million, we're told, to meet the capital requirements of exporters in Africa. Some would argue that's really not a lot of money. Well, uh, actually, the, the line of credit that was uh, extended by the African Development Bank is part of the, the bank's plan to diversify our funding sources in order to meet the uh, needs of our customers. You know that the bulk of trade in Africa is do done on a short-term basis. Mm. But what Africa really needs now is to develop further the export, the content of our exports. That is, add value. And to do that, you need to have funding that is matching two to three years or four years in some, some uh, situation so that they can acquire the required equipment in order to diversify, in order to add value to the exports. And the, the line of credit that has been extended by the African Development Bank will go a long way in meeting that uh, requirement. Now, you also operate on a system of dual recourse. How do you apply dual recourse and ensure that you mitigate against the risks that uh, entrepreneurs may have in terms of the collateral that they uh, put up? The, the, the model of dual recourse is a system whereby the bank will rely not only on the transaction, the underlying transaction, but also on a bank. Why use to use a bank uh, to uh, mitigate the risk? Because commercial banks are closer to the field. They are closer to the customers. So by having this uh, dual recourse, we are able to reduce and mitigate the risk. The local bank, knowing better the customer, will uh, be doing all the due diligence that is required, while the, uh, the bank will prepare a structure that the local bank will have to follow in order to ensure that the customers, the underlying transaction is really, uh, really uses the money for what it is meant for. So with this model, we've been able to reduce the risk. To give you an idea, mm -hmm. our bank has a non-performing loan ratio of less than 1% right now. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Talk to us about the kinds of businesses you're interested in. We know that many are small and medium enterprises, but do you have a specific sectoral focus? Yes, we, we, what we are focusing on is what we call the export development finance now. You see, Africa has been uh, exporting essentially raw commodities for the past 50 years. And it is a model that was established even before independence in Africa, that is during the colonial times. So what Africa needs now is to be able to produce finished goods that can compete on the international market. So uh, the, the most important thing today is, one, to acquire the required technology in order to add value to our African exports, in order to diversify the export of Africa. Diversification will mean diversification not only in terms of product and the content of the product, but also diversification in terms of the trading partners mm -hmm. of the continent. Africa should learn to trade with itself. We learn to trade with other continents that, than just the uh, Europe and America at, as it has been uh, doing for the past 50 years. All right. So uh, to add value to the product will help in, in doing that. All right, Mr. Ekra, our guest host is Kwebu Lekranje and he'd like to ask you a question. Mr. Ekra, hi. Um, maybe you could potentially give us an example of these finished goods. I mean, you make a great point that uh, trying to trying to move up the proverbial product ladder and rather export finished goods is potentially a better way of doing this. Could you give us an example where your bank has been involved in uh, providing um, finance for finished goods and where potentially this has had a spin-off as far as foreign direct investment is concerned and where the hence you've created employment out of that, which I can only imagine is something which is critically needed in your area. Definitely. Uh, I can give you a couple of examples. For instance, in a, a country like Côte d'Ivoire, which is the largest exporter of cocoa, we have helped an African and Ivorian exporter in developing further the export of his cocoa. That is, in, in, instead of exporting just cocoa uh, butter or raw cocoa, what he is now exporting is a finished product that goes directly to uh, the, uh, the end users in Europe. That is one of the examples. What we have been also doing, it, it is in the area of uh, service, when in countries like Nigeria or uh, Ghana, we have helped service company to provide services to the extractive industries. In Nigeria, in the old service, we provided equipment to uh, old service companies so that they can provide service directly to uh, the Shell and the Chevron and the like, instead of having Ali Burton or uh, Schumberger do that. The same uh, holds true for a country like Ghana, where we are help a service company to provide services to the gold mining sector directly. Same holds true also for Zambia, when in the copper industry, we're able to provide uh, a financing to uh, an indigenous company that will provide direct service to uh, the uh, mining companies. So what we're trying to do really is to help indigenous companies to also uh, pl uh, play a role in the local economies. Mr. Ekram, maybe just one last question for me, and that is that, I mean, we're seeing certainly a huge amount of interest uh, as far as foreign direct investment spending is concerned, specifically from China and other Asian countries trying to invest in Africa. And I know that's predominantly mineral focused, but is there potentially a, a partnership opportunity for yourselves with, in, with, with, with those kind of companies? Yes, uh, actually in our export development finance program, we see also countries like uh, China, India, and the like are potential for twinning. Mm -hmm. Twinning meaning that we want to, uh, some African investors and promoters 
to twin with India or China uh, exporters in order to acquire the technology that is required for them to, to, to be a complete exporter. So uh, we are putting together through uh, the partnership we have with Exim India or Exim China, a twinning program. For instance, if you take the textile industry, which is well developed in both China and uh, India, we think that it is possible for Chinese and African to meet together and develop export in Africa. Uh, it will be a win-win situation for everybody. And to do that, Exim India and Exim China have put together lines of credit which are awarded to African Exporting Port Bank in order to uh, help African exporters who will acquire some equipment to help them transform the exports in Africa.